In this video, we're going to talk about how to prove the formula that will help us to calculate the sum of a geometric series. And there's two of them. There's the finite geometric series and the infinite geometric series. We're going to talk about how to prove the formula to calculate the sum of both of those. So let's start with a geometric sequence. Let's say we have the sequence 3, 6, 12, 24. 48, 96, and so forth. 3 is the first term, 6 is the second term, 12 is the third term. The common ratio is 2. You need to multiply the first term by 2 to get the second term. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. So we have a common ratio of 2. So note that the second term is the first term times r. 6 is 3 times 2. The third term is the first term times r squared. 12 is 3 times 2 squared, or 3 times 4. Likewise, if you want to find the fourth term, it's the first term times r cubed. 4 minus 1 is 3. Make sure you understand that because we're going to use that later to prove the formula. Now what we have here is a sequence. To convert it into a series, we need to use the addition sign. So this is a geometric series. So let's add up the first six terms. So this is going to be S6, the partial sum of the first six terms. 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus 48 plus 96. That's 189. Now let's use the formula to calculate that sum. This is the formula that helps us to calculate the sum of a finite geometric series. It's a sub 1 times 1 minus r raised to the n over 1 minus r. So to calculate s sub 6 is going to be a sub 1, the first term, which is 3, times 1 minus r. r is 2. It's raised to the n. n is basically the number of terms, which is 6, over 1 minus 2. So this is going to be 3, 1 minus 2 raised to the 6th power. If you multiply 2 6 times, you get 64. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 minus 64 is negative 63. The two negative signs will cancel, becoming positive. So it's 3 times 63. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9. So we get 189, which is the same as what we see here. So this is the formula that helps us to calculate the sum of a finite geometric series. Now what if we were to have an infinite geometric series? So let's say we have the series 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth and then plus dot dot dot. So this series here, it has a beginning and it has an end. So it's a finite geometric series. This series it doesn't have an end, it goes on forever. So it's an infinite geometric series. The common ratio, if you take the second term divided by the first, 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. The common ratio is 1 half for all terms. Now, because the common ratio, or rather the absolute value of r, because it's less than 1, the series converges, which means that the sum is finite. If the absolute value of r if it was greater than 1, the series would diverge and you're, you wouldn't be able to calculate the sum because it can increase towards positive or negative infinity. So it's important that the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio, be less than 1 for this to work. And the sum of this infinite geometric series, we can write S sub infinity. It's the first term divided by 1 minus R. 
So in this example, it's 8 over 1 minus a half. 1 minus a half is a half. 8 divided by a half. If you multiply the top and the bottom by 2, this becomes 16 over 1, which is 16. So if you were to add these numbers, 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2, that's 14, plus 1, 15, plus a half, 15.5, plus 1, 4, 15.75. If you keep doing this, you're going to get closer to and closer to 16, but you're not going to pass 16. So that's the sum of this infinite geometric series. Now let's talk about how to prove this formula as well as the other one. So let's start with the formula that describes the sum of a finite geometric series. So we're going to have S sub n is a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 and then the second to last term is a sub n minus 1 and the last term will be a sub n now a sub 2 recall that a sub 2 is a sub 1 times r and a sub 3, we said that it's a sub 1 times r squared. a4 is a sub 1 times r cubed. By the way, the formula that describes the nth term of a geometric series or a geometric sequence is a sub 1 r raised to the n minus 1. So in our first example, where we had the series or the sequence 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. Let's say if we want to calculate the fifth term, it would be a sub 5 is equal to a sub 1, which is 3, times r, r is 2, raised to the n minus 1, or 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 to the fourth power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 16. 3 times 16 is 48. So this formula here gives you the f term of a geometric sequence. So let's think about that. If a sub n is a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1, what is a sub n minus 1? a sub n minus 1 is going to be a sub 1 times r, but we're going to plug in n minus 1 into that expression. So replacing n with n minus 1, we get a sub 1 r raised to the n minus 2. And that's what we're going to replace this thing with. It's going to be a sub 1 r to the n minus 2. And then a sub n, we already have that here. That's just a1 r to the n minus 1. Now, for the next line, what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to multiply it by r. So this, be, this is going to be r s n. And then this is going to be a1 times r. This becomes, if you multiply by r, it's going to be a1 r squared. And then plus a1 r cubed plus a1 r to the fourth. And then multiplying this by r, the exponent is going to increase by 1. So n minus 2 plus 1 that's going to be n minus 1. Multiplying this by r, the exponent will increase by 1 as well. So n minus 1 plus 1 becomes simply n. Negative 1 and positive 1 will cancel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this equation by negative 1. So this is going to be negative, And then every term within the bracket, once we distribute the negative sign, will be negative. So now we're going to add these two equations. So we're going to have s sub n plus negative r s sub n, or simply s sub n minus r s sub n. 
and then we'll have a1 now a1r minus a1r they're going to cancel a1r squared minus a1r squared they will cancel as well a1r cubed is going to cancel a1r to the fourth will cancel with something that's here and then a1r n minus 2 will cancel with something that's there and then a1r n minus 1 will cancel as well this one will not cancel so but it has a negative sign so it's going to be negative a1r raised to the n now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out s sub n s sub n divided by itself is 1 negative r s sub n divided by s sub n is going to be negative r here we're going to factor out the first term a sub 1 a sub 1 divided by itself is 1 negative a1 r to the n divided by a1 is negative r raised to the n and then we're going to divide by 1 minus r so this gives us the formula for the partial sum of a finite geometric series it's the first term times 1 minus the common ratio raised to the n over 1 minus r so that's how we can derive the sum of a finite geometric series now let's talk about how we can get this formula in order to get that formula we need to realize that if the absolute value of r is less than 1 and as n goes to infinity r raised to the n goes to an, it goes to 0 not infinity now let's talk about that so if we have 0.9 which is less than 1 raised to the first power that's 0.9 but what happens if we increase the exponent from 1 to 10? Will this number get bigger or lower? 0.9 raised to the 10th power is a smaller number. It's 0.348678. Let's use the approximate symbol. Now let's increase it to 100. 0.9 raised to 100 it's even smaller it's 0. 0.00002656 so we can see that the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n assuming that r is less than 1 or the absolute value of r is less than 1 this becomes a zero when n approaches infinity so the sum of an infinite geometric series where the absolute value of r is less than one this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the the finite geometric series formula which is a sub one times one minus r raised to the n over one minus r now this is the only part of the equation that has n and we know that r to the n will go to zero once we apply this limit so it becomes a sub 1 times 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r and 1 minus 0 is simply 1 a sub 1 times 1 is simply a sub 1 so the sum of an infinite geometric series where the absolute value of r is less than 1 is this equation a sub 1 over 1 minus r so that's how you could derive it from this formula it's by realizing that as n goes to infinity r sub n goes to 0